And there we go, live once more. Everything seems fine. Let's hope my connection stays stable tonight, although I don't have much hope for it, sadly. But yes, for today we're going to do mainly be playing the Bravi, and mainly in arcade battles, because that's the game mode where you'll see the most aircraft. So let's see how that goes. I think it's about time we just jump straight into it. Arguably the worst map to get on a destroyer. New Zealand Cape, oh boy. Hello there, Space Kraken. Not much is up yet. Although I really would have hoped for another map, although... This might be a really good map to test out the missiles against surface targets. This might be a really good map to test out the missiles against surface targets. По местам стоять. Самый полный. Право руля. Руль право. Право на борт. Руль право на борту. So let's see if we can position ourselves so we can use these missiles. Should have probably actually spawned up there, yeah. We had a clear line of sight. Прямо руль. Руль прямо. Is it? Is it a Cadiz? Missile should be clear, let's aim up so it doesn't crash into the water. Now we aim for a front rack. I think that's a Cadiz at least. That is a bit disappointing. And that is certainly a Cadiz or a battle class of some sort. Stop machine. Oh, it does not have a large enough range against these targets. Oh no, that hit it. A bit too high though. And I have to wait a full minute to reload. I so wish I had a missile ready at the moment. It'll be another 20 seconds. With a bit of luck, I might be loading the time, but I don't think so. Um, the Alt L is not something you actually activate with Alt L, it's the radar lock. If you get a radar lock on an enemy aircraft, the missile will intercept said aircraft instead of chasing it. I'll show you when we actually see an enemy aircraft up. Yeah, I will not be able to lead a missile in time, so I just fire the destroyers again. And the missile is about to go straight into the water. That made it on something again. Oh. Okay, there we have a cursor on target. Fire missile. 
You'll see the missile will go... Do something, but I think it's confused because it's surface target. It doesn't matter. But... Yeah, whenever I have a radar lock, that's when the old L thing activates. Mm, that's a Kako. I don't really want to be in the crosshairs of a Kako. Let's see if we can hit it with the main gun. Ah, uh, there might be, I don't actually know, I haven't checked. Oh. But there should be a cost for planting them. I do have to aim up. I see an enemy aircraft on the radar again as well. That missile is going haywire. And I missed. I really don't like using these missiles too much in surface combat. There we go. But now I really have to get a dodge. There's an enemy aircraft up. It's a scout aircraft? No, it isn't. It's an actual strike aircraft. Let's see if we can maybe hit it before it goes behind cover. It's flying extremely low as well. And it's going to go behind the mountain soon. Yeah. Well, I should actually use my torpedoes as well, because they're pretty good torpedoes. Oh, Erica spotted again. Let's fire a missile. Do we have a lock on Now we have one. Missile away. You'll see it'll try to intercept the aircraft instead of going straight for my cursor. You see it? There we go. I'm going to repeat this, but it's still quite slow, and it seems, yeah, my torpedo launcher has been knocked out. And I don't have parts yet. Still something on the radar, but believe it to be either the rack of the P2 or just something else. Yep. I'm gonna keep moving north though. Because I do not want to be in a gunfight at those kind of ranges, not with only one turret. Well, I should really be using these missiles a bit more against service targets, so let's just try it again. I think the rear magazine of a Frank Knox is detonatable. A bit more forward is where I should have aimed, apparently. And the bridge is out, so I can't change my course. And now we're just waiting for more aircraft. Okay, 
The chance it hits aircraft is pretty great by the looks of it. Also, I'm actually going to run myself out of missiles if I'm not careful. I would have to double check in a custom battle with some people what the minimum range of this missile is because those maneuvers are wild. I can't actually see my target too well. I did very little damage. There's something on the radar. Yeah, there is something. There we go. This way. And you can see it's going on an intercept course or trying to. And that should be a kill. Yep. If you see another aircraft spawn, I'll show you what it does without the radar lock. I don't know what's up with this guy, but it will. You could have just gone behind me. I don't really want your cruiser and his Marcatini is really getting in my way. There we go. Some separation. That should be a good leader in there. Look at these missiles just go. Launch. Doesn't help, does it? It doesn't help at all. Guess I'll just play it like a normal half Spokoni that's stuck then. This is Margotini again, he might help me repair my launcher. It'd be really cool. Ah, a torpedo hit something. I mean, it's just a Spokoini, but with one last turret. I didn't really like the Spokoini much to begin with, so I guess... Almost 5-0, it's... Yeah, I'd, I'd say 4-7 once the missiles run out. And the missiles aren't all that use, useful against surface target yet. This is my first match playing it, so I haven't really tested it out too much. And there goes my internet again. God damn it. We've captured most of the strategic zones. Can I 
Can I actually request repairs? Nope. Yeah, I don't, I don't have much, too much experience with these missiles yet. I need to know what the ship act like, acts like more over the next few matches. The Torpedo should be really good though. Especially so for arcade where the reload as well. Let's see if we can actually launch these missiles or not. I cannot. Okay. Okay, that's a pretty low half cruiser. Yeah. We can also try getting onto the capture point to repair. Because that's the thing that's actually a thing now. Repairing on capture points. That deep deal that close will not help, although are those my torpedoes? They might be. No, they're, some, they're the Margotinus torpedoes. A bit of luck, one of those might hit. It doesn't look like it. Close. Oh, I'm going to hit that guy with a torpedo for sure. Come on, reload. He's so close. What you do now is we, do, we stop shooting him. So our torpedoes have maximum effectiveness. We don't want to alert him to a threat on his flank. Nope. He's dodging. Torpedo impact. Mosquito, but I cannot shoot him because I don't have my missiles. Anything about 
computers ahead. And we'll just appear this Moscow because it's going in a straight line. We'll do one slightly ahead and slightly behind. Wing. Now to deal with the Fletcher as well, but we might be able to appeal to him. He's away, did he notice? Not yet. These torpedoes are really fast, so if they hit them. Breach, but it's fine. Keep him down as well. Fletcher's still going in a straight line. Now he's seen the torpedoes, but way too late. And I guess I'll have to showcase what these missiles do without a radar lock in the next match. So, more bombs. Those torpedoes are really nasty in arcade. Not enough for parts just yet, but it's to be expected of a rank 4. And I'll just jump right into the next one. Well, then I was actually going to check if the missiles had a rearm because but now to think of it they probably don't seeing as they're a standard weapon let's see you know it's just the torpedoes i had to rearm because the stock shell choices of any vehicle don't have a resupply cost and probably comes with the missile stock so no resupply cost i guess Yeah, that is pretty good. I do need to get some speed upgrades, actually, because this ship is slower than I thought it was. It's a 61. 67, 68. Okay, it does go pretty quick with all the speed modifications in Arcade. I'll have to check what, this, what the speed is in Realistic after this as well. Uh, I'm currently playing Arcade because you'll see more aircraft in Arcade. That's why I'm playing the Bravi in Arcade. It should be perfectly fine and realistic as well, I just I want to shoot an aircraft. Mm, what spawn do I want to pick? I kind of want to stick to the rear. Well, the, those torpedoes are really aggressive. So I'll see what I can do. And here we have the worst kind of matchmaking you can get on a Bravia, full up to 6-3. Boy. Please let those shells be for somebody else. Didn't have much with us. Quite a, few, quite a lot of bots, actually. Mm. The enemy also has a Bravi. 
question is where. That's a normal destroyer. At least these guns are decent enough even without the sap. So got some damage on that AI destroyer. There's the enemy Bravi. I'm curious whether or not I should try and detonate him with a missile. This is literally my second match in it and the missiles are good fun against uh, enemy aircraft, but this matchmaking is rough for what sounds basically just a half of Spokoini. So I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to like this ship or not. It also doesn't help, of course, that I'm still stuck. Bot Belfast beaching itself. Yeah, a little bill. Out goes my radar. I'm gonna hide my, myself behind this rock so I don't get shot at too much. Well, never mind. A lot of flooding. I need to slow down, but I can't slow down because my bridge got taken out. Flooding seems stable. There goes the main gun. And this is the reason why I wanted to hug this island, but I think this island is not quite tall enough. Jesus Christ. You're safe for now, by the looks of it. But it's taking a lot of damage and I can't repair any of it. At least the missile is still intact. Guess we'll just have to press tab to watch out for aircraft. I'm just hoping these rocks are tall enough to cover me from most of the shells, and it seems like it. It is my second match in it, and literally the worst matchmaking you can imagine. Like, my first match was good. Good matchmaking. It was 5-0, I think. Well, it was at least 5-3, no. It was just a 5-3 match, so that was fine. But this is rough, especially seeing things are being focused fired by an organ. I'm stuck on something, but I do not know what. Please, Fargo, help me repair. Also, that was my secondary ammo rack, so that should mean I don't have any shells for those middle two AA guns anymore. Yes, the missile does work. The only difference is that when the... Um, with a radar lock, the missile will intercept the air target. Whereas with a normal, you know, lock, lock on target without radar, the missile will chase the target. Can't really... White shook. Although, I could showcase it in a custom battle if I set one up. 
And I think we'll do just that after this battle. Well, let's really count anything. Seems the Fargo is not helping repair either. Any enemy aircraft up yet? Not yet. Самый полный. Внимание! Имеем серьезные повреждения. Let's just get away from this rock because I do have a backup. So let's try and do some damage perhaps to this Irvine here. I'm going at a leisurely 11 kph because my engines are destroyed. Come on. It seems to be stable for now, Fenrir, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to jinx myself. I'm just acting up a little bit earlier. Let's see. I just want to make sure my missile is clear of the rocks. Clear enough. And I did not know that shipwreck was there. This will go and do over. There we go. And this one straight into the rock. And I literally do not have any other arm that could work. Yet the front one is broken. Well, that it really still fires. Never mind if that one fires. Because yeah. no, the front one's barrels are broken, they're all under shooting. Machine so I am just stuck here at the moment. 20 seconds. The thing is, I th what I think happens is, like, let's see if I aim here, right? The missile goes from here, it goes on this diagonal to meet your crosshair, overshoots, goes back again, and so forth. It's like a weird version of parallax effect, because your your like viewpoint is over here, but the launcher is over there. Yeah, I, I c literally cannot dodge your torpedoes, even if I wanted to. Let's rock out a missile in against this Nuremberg. Nope, went into the water again. I'm going full forward, but I literally can't dodge. Okay, what happened there is, and this is something interesting that I've been noted by a few of my friends as well, the proximity fuse on these missiles, and that's literally me out of all my armor, the proximity fuse is incredibly sensitive. It'll proximity fuse on literally any other ordnance in the air that's within 40 meters of it. And there, my missile proxied on the friendly torpedo passing underneath it. I think it's about time we just chill out. I literally don't have any other armament. No enemy aircraft up yet. We'll just spawn north. So I would not call this ship reliable in the anti surface role. The missiles, at least. The ship itself is still half as coiny. But the missiles are very finicky. Oh yes, these missiles slap the ever-loving hell out of any aircraft. 
Although to a certain extent it's not really that much more special compared to a Douglas or a Sata yet, in my eyes. Again, I'm not that familiar with real life ships or technologies really, especially the modern stuff. Let's see if that Spokoni spawns in a in an aircraft. He spawned in an aircraft. Yes, he spawned in an aircraft. Radar, do your job. We spawn. We see him. Where is he? Where is it? Come on, radar, pick him up. Not seeing it. I might just be blind though. I've locked onto it, but I don't know where it is. Where is it on my screw? I've definitely locked onto it. Stop machine. There it is. I'm going to use my radar so to show you the intercept path. I still just need to put the crosshair on the target and the missile will do its job. You see the missile is just going on an intercept path. Radar lock lost. Missile goes directly for the cursor and misses the target. Radar lock was lost because he's in his radar dead soon. Damn it. Yeah. Бомбардировщик. Пелинг. 160. Дистанция 13000. Прямо руль. Руль прямо. Цель. Эсминец. Пелинг. 160. Дистанция 14000. Let's see if we can get him back on radar. Пелинг. 160. Дистанция 14000. No, that's not the target I want. That's the target I want. Пелинг. 160. There's another aircraft up. Come on. There it is. But for some reason it wants to lock onto the destroyer and I don't know why. Nope. I have a hard time seeing these aircraft. Your eyes are of 10 kilometers is the problem though, so we can't quite see them. Again, it's trying to lock onto that ship, but that's not the plan. Where is it? The Pesca is gone again. Now where is our... There he is. Up high. There he is. Radar lock again and missile away. Radar lock is poor though. Come on. That should do it. And he dodged it? No, not yet. There we go. I'd say with the radar lock, the missiles are definitely quite good. I think without them, they're a bit difficult to use. But I'll, after this match, I'm going to set up a custom battle to just showcase you the difference between radar lock and non radar lock. Yep. That's a friendly aircraft up, I assume. No, there's not any aircraft up. I'm tracking something. But where is it? 
There it is. Stop machine. Radar can't get a solid look. There we go. Turn in towards the target a bit so he definitely doesn't get into the radar dead zone and he's lost. And he's slamming himself into the ground. Yeah, the missile can't really quite keep up with your cursor like that. Let's see if we can get another lock on him. Or just see him again. And maybe we'll have to try it without the radar lock. Yeah, it's, it's VT. Of course, an anti-air missile will always be VT. They're not direct impact missiles. It's just a very large trigger radius. 40 meters. There it is. And he's been shot down by the Oba. Boring. And game over. There's not going to be nowhere near enough for tools. That's yep. So let's just start a custom match. I usually take one of the very big maps, which is going to be, yeah, just La Manche will be fine. This random nonsense for a password. Reduce the player count to two, so that only one aircraft spawns at a time. It is unrealistic battle server, so it's going to be a bit harder for me to find the enemy aircraft. But I have a radar, so it should be fine. Air spawn is over here, so let's just spawn a bit closer to it. So you all should have seen what a radar lock does. It makes a missile lead or intercept the target. So now I'll just shoot at it without a lock. Wait until it spawns. Stop it should machine. be spawning in an aircraft at least. There it is. It's in an aircraft, but now I have to find it. So let's see if we can do. I see the bird 3000. There it is. So let's raid a lock, but now I just have a normal lock. And there goes a the missile. So without the radar lock, the missile basically do like a normal anti-air missile and just try to follow the cursor. There we go. Triggered way behind it. Now with radar lock. There's a lot lost. Come on. Why am I losing it? Well, that didn't help much, did it? But yeah. I would highly recommend whenever you use this missile, especially in aircraft, you get a radar lock on them. Because as you can see, it, it waggles back and forth quite a bit. That's the same aircraft. And I'm pretty sure that it wiggling around like that is mainly caused because of the parallax between where you're actually looking and where the missile launches from. Let's see if it'll respawn. Stop machine. Should respawn. There we go. Let's wait for the radar to pick something up. Stop. 
Stop machine. Nothing on the radar yet, which is kind of weird. Let's reactivate it. Nope, there it is. Something at least. Цель. Бомбардировщик. Пилинг. 160. 300 low. There we go. Can't get a radar lock, so let's just fire it. The right one. Цель. Бомбардировщик. Пилинг. 160. So yeah, without a radar lock, it does what you expect from a missile. It's the same thing like the Douglas and the Sata. It just follows your cursor directly. And I had on target, that's just fine. The AI does not fire the missile. Badly. It is not an AI gun. Like I'm now no longer manually controlling it, we'll wait for the enemy to respawn again. And get a radar lock on it and the AI will not fire the missiles. There we go, that's another lock. Okay, that's apparently not close enough to be specific. Four thousand, okay, quite high then. There we go. Do we have a radar lock on it? We've put the AI that they fire on air targets. Doesn't fire the missile. You have to do it manually. So let's fire it again. This time with radar lock. And it behaves a lot better with a radar lock on it. Really potent anti-air missile. Not quite sure if it deserves a 5.3 battle rating because of it, though. Especially with how finicky it actually is in matches. But we'll just crack on. It also really doesn't help that all those modifications are so expensive, because it's a rank 4. I'm gonna be honest, I do not like the 180s too much. The Kirovs, I don't really like them too much. Krasnys, oh, they're a bit mediocre. Of the two, I prefer the Kafkas, though. Krasny Krim is a bit weird. I personally just found, the, for some reason I just never really liked the 180s. I, I never got around to liking their SAP or their AP. I also didn't really like the Chapayas until I unlocked the SAP for those main guns, and the SAP on the on the 152s or the Chapayas and Sverdlov, they hit quite hard. Okay, this is a pretty good map. Is the BR good? Yes. So let's do something like that. Because I do really like using these torpedoes as well. Mm, being within firing line though, this was probably not the best idea. But I still have backups to use. I'm just gonna launch a spread in that direction. Because these torpedoes are missiles in arcade. I think they're now the actual fastest torpedo in game. Let's see, can you missile the 183? Nope, missile just impact the water. Oh, 
Ah, that makes sense, Winner. Uh, I mean, I actually spaded the Kirov and the Maxim Gorky to get Ravi. And I managed to quite like them. They're, they they work. They're not quite my preference, but they work. Enemy aircraft up already. That's a recon aircraft has to be. The drone is attacking some rockets or mines. What am I detecting? And of course, first thing I lost was my torpedo launchers. I got my most useful weapon system. Let's see if I can maybe launch a missile at this destroyer. What is it? A mature. Okay, that's a large target, but it seems it beached itself. Okay, that's bad. I think I'm being repaired. Lovely. But I'm um, kind of stuck. Now to die on my left. The Emden is a bit of a detonated ship. And it, no, it's not as tanky as it originally was. Ouch, they're opening gun, but I'm fine without it to be honest. I just need to get the heck out of here and fast. Also on the bridge, but that's fine as well. Please just do not break my missile launcher. Being repaired by the Dido still? No. I don't think the Amden is affected by a reduction in ammo load. It's only something that started to come into effect with the more recent ship additions, is where Changing your ammo load actually changes the stuff that's in there, the size of the magazine. And I literally have no weapons against it, Leipzig. This map as well as I'm not really in a good spot currently to shoot an enemy aircraft. They'll easily hide behind this rock. Not that there are any, any enemy aircraft up yet. But still. I really wish I had my torpedoes around about now. This is never going to hit, is it? Oh. <laughs> Went around the Kirov. Give me a bit of a smoke show. to go through the turrets. I really cannot wait for the update where we get quote-unquote free parts and FP.
Because I am literally stuffed right now. If I had those three parts, I could have repaired Mr. Peters and used them. But I don't, so I can't. Got my missiles back again, but I don't think that's going to do much. I really don't see the point of this ship being 5-3. Like the missiles are nowhere near potent enough to be to give it a 5-3 battle rating. The torpedoes might be, but I'm not going to. I'm curious if I can actually if I fired in third person if the missile flies better. Um, clearly the answer to that is no, it goes straight into the water. Okay, noted. I think yeah, my part of my radar that helps me lock a target is lost. But still, we can try. We can try. And we got a kill. It already made this spawn more than worth it. Peter's probably you'd be dead. Because remember, torpedoes in arcade go three times their speed for the first four kilometers. And that guy is two kilometers away. Let me actually do the math of how fast a torpedo would get there two kilometers away. Those two, I'm just going to eat those repeaters and already know it. Yeah. Ah, still alive. And I've also my ordnance. Twenty-ish seconds, yeah, but that would have been really useful if only I had those torpedoes. Cool. I'm gonna spawn over on the Charlie side, because it seems we're doing a bit better over there. Pardon me. Things is not like if I launch a missile. I can't, of course, because superstructure is in the way. But the smaller I can make the parallax effect, is it's make the wobbling effect smaller? Is my question? Uh, yes, it does make it smaller. So if I can make the parallax smaller, wobbly effect is smaller as well. And that missile went in the water. Let me shoot over the dido. There we go. Let's just shoot to hit. There we go. Samy polny. 
Эсминец! Беринг, 340. Дистанция 7000. Цель. Катер! Беринг, 20. Дистанция 5000. Право руля. Руль право. Цель. Эсминец! Ух, окей. Один секунд. Но это выглядит как очень уступчивый G5. Это очень вкусный таргет. My secondary guns are firing upon the coastal vessel. I saw away. Aircraft down. I will say I do enjoy the SAM ships, the surface to air missile ships, because who likes gas to be honest. But at the same time I don't really see why this thing is a 5-3. I'm yet to be convinced. Oh you mean like if I fired forward? Aim the missile up above my superstructure and then down. I, th I don't think that'll work with how far up it has to go. These missiles aren't exactly the most maneuverable either. And I think with the amount of like overcorrection it does, it will just go up, try and get to the crosser and slam itself into the ocean. Unless they're literally like... 20 kilometers away where you can just gradually work the missile down, maybe? I don't think it'll work. Yeah, of course, there's, there's no crime and spitballing possible solutions. But you know, one thing that works is just m making the parallax a bit smaller. By shooting like a forward angle, a rear angle. Yeah, I don't really see the usefulness of these missiles in an anti-ship role. Oh, something spotted again. My question always is, why do you spawn an aircraft if you know there's a SAM ship out there? Especially something like a Stuka. Then again, if it's the last spawn, I guess you don't really have much choice. He's about to actually exit my radar area, but it should be fine. There we go. This way. Oop, he's seen the missile. Will he be able to defeat it? And he defeated it. Not that difficult. There's another guy behind him. Maybe a missile can go on him. Nope. Okay, how we had we didn't we have two ships engaging at Krasny? What happened to them? Where are my allies? And they're going to repeat the launchers again. Oh, damn it! I can't understand firepower of this magnitude. There I go, my missile launcher, damn it. LA7 is gonna get close, 45s opening up. SG6 is not interested. Oh, this is such a. just bathed above the ship as well. And this is an arcade.
Granted, it is still stock, but still, this is not the performance you'd expect from a Spokorny. Area 7 seems to be hunting the recon aircraft now. Yeah, I, I don't see the point at all why this thing is a 5-3. Oh, the ones we have in game, probably E13, I think is the one I'm thinking of. for something that's actually 5-3. Well, it seems the battle has moved further than our spawns. So many aircraft up. Like, that's also the difficult part about playing the Bravi, in my opinion. Like, with Sata and Douglas, you have an excuse to just do nothing but focus down aircraft. You can just sit in the back of the map and wait for aircraft to spawn in Douglas and Sata, and nobody will blame you. But with the Bravi, it feels like you have potent torpedoes, you have a decently potent gun. So why not fight? normal ships as well. It's weird. It'll take me a while to get the hang of the Bravi. At least this should be a victory. The other thing I love about the Krasny Krim is when you fire it, the guns are just not in sync. I think it used to be a bit more exaggerated in the past though, of how out of sync the guns were. But you can still kind of tell. Slow ship though. I need to double check if I actually have all the modifications equipped. I should have. Cell, Lurky Crasher. I3 is such an awkward battle rating. Because a lot of ships in 5 3 just are nowhere near the same level of like um, firepower, mobility, just overall youthfulness. Like these two ships, Krasny Krem and Bravi, are the same BR, remember, as the Atlanta? Or for that matter, actually, the new French ships, which are like. don't feel nowhere near the same like, as the. Krasny Krem and Bravi. Arguably, the Agano is kind of slimmer to those two, in terms of effectiveness. 
Then you've also got stuff like the Dido, the Hawkins, the Arethusa, the Leander. Really? Just such an awkward battle rating. But anyway, we have parts now, so let's continue. Now we don't have to lament losing our torpedoes anymore. Well, too late. New Zealand Cape again. Let me just quickly hover over it. And as in arcade, you don't actually see the green speed indicator. Never mind then. Does this map again? Uh, it spawns there again. It's just spawn up north. По местам стоять, с якори сниматься. Самый полный. Лево на борт. Руль лево на борту. Let's see. Катер. Пелинг. Five seven. Дистанция десять тысяч. Боевая тревога. Let's try a missile into one of these destroyers' face. Пелинг. Восемьдесят. Дистанция. I'm your heavy cruisers. Attack on Kako. Okay. Yeah, keeping the parallax down definitely helps it though, using it against surface targets. Can't really see what I'm aiming for there, but it should be somewhere near the front turrets. There we go. Turning in. Just below the bridge is what I'd impact it. I also want to test out if I can do the same to the rear of the vessel. Let's just turn around. It's just a... Like this ship feels nowhere near as agile as the Spokoni. And I'm not sure if it's just because it's stock or not. So I'm just gonna launch this at that destroyer. Test bed. Sure thing, Fenrir. That's such a good target, but it's such an awkward angle for me. You know what? Let's aim up. Because then the missile's parallax should be a bit counteracted by altitude. There we go. Okay. Bring it down, bring it down. Can we hit him? No, I think the missile just hit the water there. Keep turning because I do want to still test out the rear firing. The patrol ship might be a good target. About as rear as we will get. Oh, that's quite a bad horse vertical one, but it's, uh, it's still alright. I think I still prefer firing forward, though. And that detonated on something, I'm not sure what. Yeah, the missile seems quite in unreliable against surface targets. How did I think of it? I think Napalm Rat made a video on this thing, didn't he? I really should watch it just to laugh at it sometimes. Being shot at by an enemy destroyer. Let's see. Let's just get behind cover again. It's candid. Quite a few more torpedo boats around. Stop it's right. I'm gonna try and fire another missile at the torpedo boat. Or just to coastal the vessel. So aim the missile up. So it doesn't splash into the ocean. And we work our way down. Almost. 
There we go, come on. In this will hit. I shall hit him as well, yeah. Aim is encrypting alpha, but I think it's just coastal vessels. So let's try and make our way up there. It's a shame we don't have a reload animation for that launcher. Also, is it me or do the missiles in that Amorak look so much bigger in the Amorak than they do on the launcher? Alright. Can I aim this thing? Well, if I aim this thing straight up so we can get a size comparison. Uh, that's, nah, that's about the same actually. It looks a bit weird because you, you can't really see the difference between the missile and the rail it's attached to. I'm gonna put my radar one scale larger. I think after getting sap shells and getting FP, mobility upgrades are definitely going to be my first priority on the ship. Bravo, Rui, bravo. Yeah, we can hope. I still really found this update quite hollow when it came to naval additions. Just a bit. Like the French tree itself isn't bad, but it's Kind of a disappointing, ta disappointing tactery, what it is. What's supposed to be the long-awaited French naval tree, it's a bit meh. And yes, the French naval tree was only blue water. And yet yeah, all the additions that updated were just blue water as well. The French naval tree and four other ships, and that's it. What an impressive naval-focused update that was. Beats 200 launch torpedoes, but it was. I think um, I'm close to getting the Jean d'Arc. I don't quite have it yet, but I'm close to it. I've actually. I haven't been playing. Uh, I have been playing a fair bit today, but most of it was just unlocking Bravi. I literally unlocked Bravi in three hours, like three and a half hours flat. From zero to fully unlocked. What having some ships to spade can do for the grinding process. I think I got around 50,000 or even more RP from just spading the Voroshilov and Maxim Gorky. Not the Voroshilov, the Kirov. No enemy aircraft yet. But there we go. It's gonna... where is it? A thousand, that's pretty low. Okay, there it is. There we go. Missile away. And again, these missiles are actually not that hard to defeat as long as you know they're coming. And for some reason, a lot of people don't realize when they're coming. Like this person.
I don't think I'll ever hit that minus three. Okay, he is asking for a missile, isn't he? So let's reduce the parallax. Oh, they will wreck torpedo boats as long as you can hit them. Missile away, and let's see if that makes them panic. It makes him panic, and... Okay, I can actually detonate him as long as I get close enough to the MRX. Okay, now that I'm starting to figure these missiles out, I can definitely see their usefulness against some surface targets. Okay, so he just got done in by a missile, right? He, he just got sh ammo wrecked by, an, by a missile, and now he spawned in an aircraft. Bold choice. Like, do people not put two and two together? when you get missiled by a ship. And he left. Torpedo should do the trick against that Moscow. So let's use torpedoes. Moscow does not seem to be... Uh, is he turning? It does seem like he's turning. We'll see what happened to those torpedoes. Guns. Oh, I just realized something. The AI Blue Water ships can no longer fire their main guns. Like, really? Like when you when I saw that guy just made it so that AI can no longer fire the main guns of ships of blue water ships specifically, I thought it would have been different for the AIs, but apparently it isn't. But I was, I was already wondering, like in an earlier match, the Moscow was also not shooting me. I, I guess that's why. Also, there's enemy aircraft up, so that was kind of a waste of a missile, but it will. So the only thing that's shooting me on that Moskva is its secondaries. Like you just see that the, the primary guns are not even turning. That is sad. How did that not get caught? Well, it makes him a whole lot less dangerous, I guess. Okay, now we can focus back on aircraft again. That was just a recon. I did an FW200. Can I make it? Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, we know what to do. Turn in. Reduce parallax effect. Fire the missile. Still kind of bad parallax, but we'll be fine. And aim for the ammo rack. There we go. Powerful enough to knock out a Moffat. 
Which is not really saying much, but it's something. We don't, yeah, we don't have nearly enough tickets for me to capture this point. But that was definitely a better match, knowing how to deal with those missiles against surface targets. And we'll just keep on going. think. I saw Yuki Kaze earlier in this chat. He's probably looking at that because I've probably mentioned this before on other streams but me and a group of friends and a lot of other people run like a player run quote unquote world war mode where it's basically two sides play a tabletop game and every battle that happens on the tabletop game gets played out in War Thunder. Yuki is still in here. And I'm thinking, like, these these anti-air missiles are definitely most accurate when using radar. But we found out that radar is pretty easy to counter with the aircraft we use in that World War mode. So I'm curious if it's actually just... If it's effective to use it for... If it's effective to use it without the radar leading. Then again... There's not really that many aircrafts of chaff, is there, that we have? Although there are other ways of... Yeah, there's not many aircraft with chaff, and there's not many aircraft we have with RWR either. So it's not really that much of a... That much of a giveaway. There's a few. Like, for example, the... Intruder, the A6, has RWR and, cha and chaff. But that'd be a lot of chaff you have to throw out, and that's still... Breaking the radar lock does not defeat a missile. So it wouldn't even really be that... It can mess with the missile, though. That's a funny... Overcorrection it does. Yeah, we've been using Douglas's up until now to simulate like the missile defenses of Cold War ships. And Douglas's are fine, but they are quite lacking in certain in some aspects as well. And the Bravi does seem a bit more adequate. It's it is not. I know, but you can use it as one. It's getting really close to my missile stores. Yeah, I know, well, again, it will, it, will, it will not defeat these missiles, because if I lose radar lock, all it does is change my missile from intercept to chase. So the missile will still try and go for the target, even though you chaff it, even though you try and break the radar lock, and of course... Fire. But yeah. It's probably a more interesting vessel to use than the Douglas though. Ooh, that was a good hit. Despite the Difficulty with the parallax. A yuga ball. Is 
Bumped into a friendly cordillera. I can help him repair, I guess. I need to be very careful now that I think of it. That's a Yugo mob. And I'm just standing here in the middle of an open channel. That's a Japanese destroyer. The likelihood of torpedoes is way too great. Can I maybe catch it all of them? This voice has lost a good bit earlier. There we go. I mean, the warhead on these missiles isn't that big. It's 44 kilos, which is like a chunky battleship shell and that's it. Let's see if my torpedoes will hit it all then. That hit no ammo. I mean, did they? I really need to read up a bit more on it. I know there's some famous cases of long lances detonating on the ship. But I don't think every single long lance that got hit detonated, did they? Useful land right now. Well, not yet. Also, this is good matchmaking. This is like 5 3. Although, more like 4 3 with me being in here. This, this is very good matchmaking for this ship. I'm waiting to see if the Hatsuhara will spawn an aircraft because he's out of ship spawns. Yeah, there he goes. There we go. There he is, I see him. Just eat that missile as soon as possible. And I feel very sorry, but that's just the way it is. The best reserve TD, Britain. The Vega is a monster, and I will not take any other ship over it. The only thing the Vega lacks is torpedoes. But for its firepower, I think I'll gladly give it up. Frunze was... Frunze is still potent, it's just not quite my style. To be honest, I don't think there's really any bad reserves. Maybe the Clemson is still not really that 
great, the guns are quite inaccurate. But Mitsuki is alright. Um, Leopard, also alright, although kind of lackluster amount of guns. Vega is very good. Italy mm, suffers a bit, I guess. Hey, HMS Churchill is no longer a reserve, so that doesn't count. Yeah, that does require some time having to spade HMS Churchill back in the day. I've actually forgotten which Italian destroyer is the reserve. It's Turbine, isn't it? Burrask? I think the entirety of French rank 1 destroyers are quite rough. But they're not the that terrible. They're just rough. And there we go. Oh, I still have my missile. Yeah, same. I'm quite fond of my Mitsuki as well. How an OS to use poison. Okay. Tempting. Very, very tempting. Now, is the Kingfisher awake? I'm willing to bat no. Year two? That Ognovoy is an AI, so it can't shoot anymore. Year two is over there. Getting the missile on target again. Come on. I think most radars can actually pick up mines in the water. Mines and launched rockets are things radars pick up for some reason. Year 2 is awake, but not quite awake enough. Nope. Need to be a bit more aggressive here, evasive maneuvers. Although he almost defeated my missile. Keyword being almost, of course. Yeah. Like, the rockets kind of make sense for a radar to pick that up, but mines? Really weird. Yep. And you put a Thierry again and Satka again. Uh, Yeah, it really does. Again, then again, we're still missing functional surface radar. Who knows? It is kind of funny though when you think about it. It means that your radar can pick up something the size of mines, literally barely poking above the water surface, but it can't pick up any other surface targets. Please, Krasny Kravkas, stay right there so my torpedoes can be launched. Uh oh. Yep, luckily he was not quite aware of the way of the Bravi. Yes, okay. Subnautical missiles away. 
Krasny Kafka is just sitting there. Like a deer in the headlights. I just need to get the hack into dodge. Out right, of dodge. Into cover. And Krasny Kafka is gone. There's a lot of mechanics I'd like to see this for naval. Sonar. Sonar has to be a requirement if they want to add submarines. But when I'm kind of one for cinematic purposes as well as nighttime battles. Will the IL-4 be awake? My bats are on no. It is using surface to air missiles, no matter what the ship is, a naval is always satisfying. I hear a torpedo warning. It might also just be a mine warning. Could have sworn I heard a mine warning. It's a proceed of caution. We don't have... That is definitely the mine warning, because I don't see any incoming torpedoes. But I literally do not see the mines either. So we just stay like this. We should be so... Nope, that's just water. We should be clear. Here I'm on ready to torpedoes. I'm keeping one in reserve. But it's at 25, should eat all of them. Still have the mine warning. Be careful, there they are. Very good. We're fine. Over there, to Peter away. Ideally, I'd knock out this bridge right around now. This thing is going to be game over already. He's a, yep, there we go, game over. That was a solid match though, mainly thanks to the good matchmaking. Only facing destroyers and PT boats and such. And that should be FP. Yep. So now on to SAP. And then working on some speed mo modifications. Yeah, I think I was talking about I'd love to see night battles being a thing. Mainly, I just want searchlights to be something functional on chips. I think it'll look quite good, cinematically speaking. I should have both FP. Yep. Both it automatically when you close down the... Um, it, it automatically buys the modifications when you close the window. At least it does for me. 
I don't know if that's an option you have to enable or not. But it's good it's good to call it out, so don't worry about that. I'd rather go into battle with FP than without it. Norway is not a bad map, it's encounter Norway. But I assume it's going to be a high tier battle. Like a full up tier. Five zero. I can actually tell five three six zero, which I assume is going to be a bot. And you have me five three five three, six zero six zero. These are bots. Five zero. No enemy six zeros at all. That's very strange. We're gonna spawn here and maybe torpedo the fleet. I could play in Omaha in the future, sure. Like if, if people have suggestions for me to play certain things, I'm open to playing things. I am going to stick to the Bravi this stream. But like on the next stream, I can always play whatever people suggest me to play. Like, I've been thinking of a little project as well um, for future streams, although I'm not quite sure if I want to do that just yet. But basically I've been thinking of doing like... of keeping a list of every single ship in game as every single tech tree ship. And then playing at least like a hundred or maybe 50 battles in every single tech tree ship on stream. I think it would be an interesting long-term goal for if I really don't know what to do during the stream. And by that point I think people would also have a vast video archive of every single ship in game, if I were to do that. I know it's a lot. Like I do how many battles in like three hours? I often say that in an hour time you do three to four naval battles. Um, Three hour stream, I'll do eight with a bit of luck. I could also just do ten, which is probably a lot more feasible, just doing ten in every single ship. But it doesn't mean I have to do ten in a row with every single ship. Just eventually ten. I've launched a set of torpedoes against the air fleet. That would be. Yeah. I think 10 battles would definitely be a lot more doable than 100 is a bit too lofty a goal. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, I do like playing EC every now and then, as long as I'm playing a battleship. Like, I did one a while ago now with the Alaska. Tons of fun. Mainly because the Alaska is actually a pretty good ship for EC as well. Battle cruisers in general really are. There we go, there's the enemy sixes. I've played the Arizona a while ago on stream, I think. Um, what is it again? There, there is a live stream where I've played the Arizona. Oh, which one was it again? It was not that long ago. I remember the thumbnail before me. Let me double check. It was a while ago, though. 
It was almost a month ago, and it was the stream name was All But Standard. And I think I mainly played the Arizona on that, although was it the Wyoming I played more? I don't remember. And my live streams also always permanently stay on my channel as well. So if you ever have like a week where you don't know what you want to do, you have quite a few live streams to go through. Going from the scuffed first one all the way to the most recent ones. No, I have. I also have a stream of Nevada. That's more recent. Um, the one I'm thinking of is a bit before that one. I think where's the Nevada stream? Hey, you no, know, there was like a stream of me three weeks ago getting Nevada, and then um, I think a bit more than a month ago there was one. Me playing the Arizona, but I'm I'm gl I'll gladly play it again. I thought the, the thing is, Arizona isn't spaded, and I in general don't like playing ships that aren't spaded yet when I have nothing to research with them. Because otherwise I just wasted. Um, although you can try and just avoid the spading bonuses. Because the spading bonuses are really helpful when trying to grind a new ship out. It's what it's what made me get the Bravi in like three hours. Just getting the spading bonuses on the Maxim Gorkin Kirov. Yeah. I once, um, another group of, of naval people actually hosted an event a while ago, right? Where they tried to queue snipe with two different four-man squads in an EC battle. And we actually managed to pull it off, so eight of us were in the same team in an EC battle. But the organization was a bit scuffed, because the guy wanted like one battleship squad and one destroyer squad. And what ended up was the battleship squad never got enough spawn points to actually spawn a battleship. And the other squad didn't have anything bigger than a light cruiser in it. So it was a bit scuffed in the end, but oh well. It's still fun to have like an eight-man squad running around on the same side of the see match. Oh, that reminds me as well. I don't know how many of you have seen my... I did a stream a while ago with participating in a simulator naval slash air event with Wingling Dragon. And I don't know how many of you remember that event. But sadly it was put on hold because the main... Like, Wingling Dragon is making that event for somebody else. And that somebody else put it on hold because the whole economy debacle thing that happened recently. This is a real shame because it was such a fun event. And I think Wingling only really wants to release the whole event when it's finished and when the original event for that other guy has been done. So I don't think I can get my hands on that event file. No enemy aircraft yet. I don't think I'll get close enough to the convoy to really do anything anymore. There's a lot of PT boats around, and I'm really tempted to missile them. 
Let's try it. Do we have any insights at the moment? Nope. There's of course that guy over there. Is this A20G awake? My bet again is on no. Minimized parallax. Fire the missile. Let's disable my anti-aircraft gun so the missile doesn't proxy on them. Was it the missile that hit him or was it the 45 that killed him? I don't know. Understand what the guy's plan is. This is not like the PT-59 has torpedoes either. And there he goes. Will he spawn in an aircraft? It's very likely. There he is in an aircraft. Is he awake? After having been killed by a Bravi twice, is he aware of the fact it's a SAM ship? And it seems the answer is no. It seems that Hepper is having quite a party. Torpedoes are about to be reloaded too. That's a recon aircraft somewhere on the surface. I think it's actually gone now. It's nothing to be too worried about. Stop, machine! Torpedo apparatus, ready. Torpedo arrived. Goal: difficult air raid. Bearing 340. Distance: 5,000. Goal: the Sminets. Bearing 340. Distance: 5,000. Torpedo arrived. Can we ammo rack that summer? If the missile didn't go into the water, it is.
Ladder chicken. Bravo, Rulia. Cell. Yes, minute. I'm doing fine. Having some fun in the. Yeah, having some fun in the Bravi. Getting the hang of it. I've noticed that the missiles are a lot more usable against service targets if you reduce the parallax between your sight and a missile launcher. And you can join me after this battle, sure. Was this aircraft going to be awake? Not really. It didn't count either, I think. I already shot down two aircraft before it. Warning though, chicken, I am playing arcade. And I'll, I'll wait for you, don't worry. I am playing arcade just because there's more aircraft to shoot at. Okay, let me look. Does the Bravi have any interesting camos? That's paid for, that's also paid for. What are the free ones like? Okay, it's a bit boring, but okay. And the unicorn is barely any different. I don't think I've really mentioned this too often yet on streams. But let's actually go to... Do I have a coastal lineup here already? I do. But coastal vessels have camos now as well. Although, for the most part, they're, mo they're just the same camos as the blue water vessels, especially the unicolor ones. But yep, yeah, all coastal vessels also now have camos. I do kind of like this bicolor stripe ones. Oh boy. Let me take a look at a few other ones whilst we're waiting chicken. That's a pretty good camo, actually. Ready to be invited already. I'll be right there. To be, no, should be this lineup? No, what lineup did I put it in? In my 5 hour lineup, okay. Where is Chicken? There he is. I should actually probably put some sort of coastal vessel in his lineup. Let's see. Although I'm mostly using the Bravi anyways, it'll be fine. Whenever the chicken's ready. No. Um, there's... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me double check again. I think there was something like 40 total stars you can get. Or something like that. You can get a lot of stars. I don't know what the due date was again. I need to look it up. I need to look it up. I don't think by missing one you don't get access to the tree anymore. Or you can't get access. I think there's a fair few you can unlock. 
Oh, but finding this is going to be a pain again, isn't it? Although the update hasn't been out for that long, surely I can find it again. There it is. So what are the requirements again? Yeah, no, there's... You, you, the stars are daily, right? Or the two, like once every two days. Because you have until July 24th is the last testing star. And I think you only need 12 stars, right? So you have another month to get stars. Just missing one should be fine. Ooh, this is a pretty good map. Bravi. По местам стоять, якоре сниматься. Самый полный. Лево на борт. Руль лево на борту. Катя. Matchmaking is a little bit rough. Yeah, five seven. Боевая тревога. Руль прямо. Левый руль прямо. Okay. That is a bold lineup from this guy. Isuzu Shimakaze and Akazuki, jeez. A lot of Japanese torpedoes are a lot better in arcade, of course. That's like their 5-7 player. And he spawned an SF-40 light first. That is a bold choice. Yeah, I don't really... Like, you have a lot of days to get these tester stars. Yeah, it's, it's another 30 days, I believe. Of stars that you can get. I don't actually know if it can ammo a cruiser. I, the missile certainly has enough range. It has a range of what? 16 kilometers? That's fine. But I, I, I've i managed to ammo a Frank Knox and a Moffat in it. I haven't had much success with other ship types. Yeah, Frank Knox, like, at the waterline, he should be able to get the detonation. Enemy torpedoes just whizzed past us from the V990. It's a, like, I, I like the Bravi, I like it quite a lot, but it's really weird that it's the only hip of its type we could add it. Like, yeah, it seems that you can get into the destroyer MRX pretty alright with these missiles, but I haven't tried against the cruiser yet. I don't think I'm gonna try that in a live battle, although I should actually. There's just not many good targets for me to pick. And I'll say again, whilst the missiles are definitely a plus, they're an interesting weapon type, I don't entirely believe it makes a ship a 5-3 ship. Especially because these missiles are not nearly as 
Easy to use as a gun is, I guess. That's a lot of torpedoes, geez. T14, and I've locked onto an enemy aircraft as well, apparently. Ah, that's a bad angle for me to have. Unless he stays up. Let's slow away. I met this guy earlier today as well, and he seems to be unaware of the missile threat. And two missiles his way. And mine is going to reach first, sorry. But yeah. Oh no. You know, 90, but no torpedoes that I can tell. We have a Dutchman over there. My arch nemesis. Let's see if we can get a missile open. I believe Spokonius Amorak is around there, or is it just below the rear gun? That is close, not just not quite close enough. Enemy T-14 again. We don't have the advantage anymore. Цель. Катер. Перинг. 260. 3000. Катер. Перинг. 200. Дистанция. I need to be very careful about the V990 because that thing has missiles for torpedoes as well. I think it's still afloat. It is not good to know. The Milbert also just left us one death. Okay. I think the next aircraft spawn should probably be from a squad mate. Let's see if we'll have one soon. Not quite yet. It would be a bit cruel to torpedo any Suzu. Bravi up until now is alright. Definitely very much making to Bandit thanks to its 5-3 battle rating. But other than that, it, it's, it's fun. The missiles are fun against the aircraft, as is to be expected. But I don't really understand why it's a 5-3. Le Bien Pan. That Fletcher is going to try and sneak himself in between. The Shkant is already pretty much sinking. Look, yes. I think this is a torpedo getting very close to the DCZ. Enemy aircraft up? Yep, enemy aircraft up. Come on. Chicken, you know what to do. 
There's a B-17 up as well. This will wait. And kill. Now is that one is mine. Or well, whoever's missile gets there first, I guess. If my missile wants to behave. Самый полный. Цель. Эсминец. Берен. 320. Дистанция 5000. Цель. Тяжелый крейсер. Here too. If you want him, you can have him. Yep, missiles already away. Стоп, машины. Торпедные аппараты ТОВС. And it's not a kill. Oh, like one Bravi is already quite a bully, but two of them. Берен. 280. Дистанция 7000. Стоп, машины. And again, the thing is, these missiles are not that difficult to dodge, especially in arcade where aircraft are more maneuverable and can't rip their wings off. You just have to move. You can defeat them kinetically pretty easily. And all you have to do is press tab, look at the enemy team list and see Bravi to know there's going going to be a missile heading your way. It is not that difficult to do. Then I guess I I guess 5-3 is not really that advanced of a battle rating anymore for naval. Not what it used to be. And the aircraft. Can I detonate an Akazuki? Let's find out. Akazuki torpedoes away against me. And the missile will proxy on the torpedoes. So let's steer it away from the torpedoes. There we go. Full speed back into cover. Torpedoes at Enterprise. Oh, is he going to be getting a bit, yeah, a bit too fast? I'm flooding. Did not notice. Enemy aircraft up again, this time let's fire it without the radar. It has noticed the missile. Аварийные трюмные группы приступить к борьбе за живучесть. Цель. Yeah, th definitely the missile doesn't seem to perform that well in the anti-air roll when it's chasing a target, rather than intercepting thanks to a radar lock. Not really, mainly because I only have high explosive. I have Amorect 2 destroyers though with the 
missiles on the Bravi. Other than that, no duty one shots. Other than a lot of aircraft, of course. The torpedo, I should be able to dodge. Mm, I'm not able to dodge that. And that's a long lance. Yep. Let's actually go across the Krim now. There's not really much use in getting the Bravi at that stage of the match. I do, but I don't think it'll one-shot cruisers anywhere near reliably. Like, one-shotting destroyers is already quite unreliable. And game over. Not really that eventful of a match compared to some of my previous ones. But still fine. Actually, the first time somebody asked, and I have not seen... Um... I have not been detonated my missiles yet. So that is yet to be seen. To see what happens to that. The only thing that got close to detonating my missiles was me taking the Akazuki's long lance. But it's already a ton of TNT in and of itself, so that's not really much of a test. Yeah, again, I also detonated Moffats and Noxus, but I haven't really gotten... I haven't really fired at cruisers either, because I don't really see the point. Especially when I'm playing Arcade, and I have torpedoes that arguably go almost as fast as my missile. Actually, what is the, what is the speed difference? The missile goes... Does it tell how fast it goes? Not really. Or am I just reading over it like... Oop, never mind. But then the, the torpedoes in arcade go so fast. The thing is, that's a diff that's not really a missile launcher. It's a Asrock launcher, which is like a torpedo with a, miss with a rocket-powered secondary stage. It's, it's not quite the same. Yeah, it's kind of. It's not quite a missile. If anything, the access set launchers on the Albatross are closer. But the thing is, those are anti-ship missiles, and we're in a full-up tier. No, that's a Detroit. I almost thought it was a... ...Nippert News. I don't know. I, I need to test that in a custom battle with somebody. Probably off stream. Old smoke screen, but I'll accept it. The Battle Pass 183 is a really good ship. Those rockets are really fun. That's an AI, so it doesn't really matter. And it's gone as well. I will say the like that but the um, Egyptian PR-183 with a rocket launcher on the back, good battle pass boat. S701 from this battle pass, also a pretty solid battle pass boat. Just an overall solid German premium. Compared to the VS8 at the same BR. Distance 14,000. Bravo on board. 
I'm turning in to minimize the parallax effect. So the missile doesn't try to overcorrect too much. Mm, what do I shoot? Do they have any Omaha's? They have a Kuma. Let's try out the Kuma. I think it has ammo right at the waterline below the guns. I'm not entirely sure. It's been ages since I played the Kuma. Not nearly deep enough, and I think that those shells are a bit too deep for me to hit. What about... Hmm. They're not really presenting themselves that. Heavy Cruiser is presenting itself fairly well. But I think its main ammo is also too deep. I could go for the shell rooms, maybe? Underneath that secondary turret. I think it's about there-ish. Bit higher. Like, what is the actual armor penetration of these missiles? 70 millimeters. Not bad, but it's. I don't think that's enough for most cruisers. Unless their ammo is really close to their hull. Ismith Enterprise, maybe? Further to the rear. Like that, that was also a sub water headline head, but it was too much in the front. Oh. I think, like, I can definitely see it being possible that these missiles ammo rack the larger, like, the early cruisers, but it's way too inconsistent. The Omaha is probably the most likely thing to ammo rack with these things, because Omaha's ammo rack is quite close to the hull, thanks to the narrow hull. There is my bridge. Distance are the Thunderbolt. Stop, machine. Really lucky that those main gun shells didn't hit him. I unlocked the sap, didn't I? I completely forgot to equip it. Yep. It always happens when I unlock the AP shells of the ship. I'm 
also to be honest not too familiar with most cruiser ammo racks. I don't think I can reliably ammo rack cruisers with these missiles anyways. Just because I don't know the ammo rack locations. Not fighting nothing but Moffatting Her Helena's does to your ship knowledge. Yeah, I know where the Hel where the Tashkan's ammo rack is, but I wasn't aiming for the ammo rack, I was just aiming to hit it. I know for a fact I can ammo rack a Moffat. So let's see if I can do it again. If the paradox isn't too bad, never mind. Oh, you have no engine. Yep. The thing is, I can't really get back there to help you. I could try. I don't really look at most people's stat cards except for the bots because I find it laughable to look at the, zom at the zombie stat cards. I know why he's turning in because he want to, wants to angle against the incoming fire, but I was literally about to cross that. Oh well. Being so high. Okay. Trumnay group, I sushit at Seke. Avarini, Trumnay group, it's fairly durable, but it's not really that durable either. Cell, Lehki Kreser, Bering, Sodvasa, Distance, same tissue. Vimania. So we try out a Dido. And my missile just pissed off because I didn't have a line of sight on it. Oh well. Interesting to note that the missile reload is also affected by repair pro processes. That's good to know. I'm slowly making my way towards my squad mate. I mean, it depends on the ship. Like, I think, especially if you're extremely conservative with your ship's positioning, that you can easily farm the bots, especially the Moffats, if you're in, like, a semi-decent destroyer yourself or a good cruiser. You really can farm the other zombies. Also, there's something up ahead of us, the I-90. Which definitely has me worried because it's going for a convoy. Almost in range to repair. And now we run for our lives. You can't really go to intercept the Vina 90 anymore. Helldiver, maybe go try and deal with it? No. Maybe. There's also a Helena shooting at us from all the way over there. Noob 5 guy. Another zombie. 
And I think that this chicken gone. Yep. Oh, that's a good question. My ra like rarest vehicle or rarest method? Ooh, that's also a kill I managed to get with the Isuzu, the um, Japanese coastal of the same rockets as the Mitra. I think I've actually once gotten a kill with those rockets. And I, rem I remember against what as well, there was an Iron Army in close range. I've done that one as well. Ah, no, I, I know my rare skill. At least the one I found the most entertaining is... A B-17 with the rear mast of a Huga. That is, that is the one kill that I'm going to remember for as long as I'm playing naval. Is the amount of aircraft back when Huga was first introduced that flies straight into the rear mast of it. And the most memorable of those was a B-17. When I have to think back on what the rarest vehicle is that I managed to knock out, I don't quite remember. I think one of the rarer vehicles I, one of the vehicles I've only seen once is an Excelsior. And like the Black Prince, surprisingly for me, is also quite up there for rare vehicles I've seen. Mainly because I also don't play tanks all that much. But I do not the, I think I've only seen one Excelsior in my entire gameplay. Just a one. Ramming kills are were a lot more common in the past. They were a lot more common when, like, pre-naval split, when destroyers and um, coastal vessels fought together a lot more. You'd run into a few ram kills. I think, like, I recently saw somebody saying that that achievement is impossible to get. I think in either a Discord on like a forum or something like that. I think I have the ram kill achie achievement. I have to double check. But I think I have that one. The RTing up plane is all. Yeah, it's very rare. I don't think I've managed to pull it off yet, RTing up plane. And even go as far as to say like just a collateral tank kill is also pretty rare. Uh, I, um, I, that, that reminds me of one of my rarest tank kills I got back way back when I was grinding with Japanese tanks when they first came out. Is I once... I was playing the Hoai and that's this 2-3 this Japanese tank with a 75mm almost howitzer. And I remember this clearly, I shot at the BT-7 with a heat shell, and the heat shell ricocheted off the ground into the underbelly of a BT-7 and killed it. I think that's one of my rarest tank kills now that I think of it. There's a heat shell rico ricocheting off of the ground.
Эсминец. Перинг 160. Дистанция 12 тысяч. I'm really trying to dig through my memory for rare kills. Внимание! Имеем серьезные повреждения. Цель! Эсминец! Перинг 120. We're behind them. Take us quick, badly. Право на борт. Цель! Корабль! Перинг 120. Дистанция 10 тысяч. Торпеда вышла. Корабль! Перинг 100. Опасно малая глубина прямо по курсу. Цель легкий крейсер. Стремной группе осушить отсеки. Опасно малая глубина прямо по курсу. Внимание! Имеем серьезные повреждения. Руль прямо. Все машины назад. Lever on board. Roll lever on board. I'm trying to think if I actually ever got an air kill with like the AI gunners firing the 57 millimeter howitzer over like the Hago ship. Like a 57 millimeter anti-tank gun slash howitzer fired at against an aircraft. I'm not sure if it actually happened or not. I'm trying to think if, I, if anything along that sort of thing happened. I don't think it did. I think torpedo kills and flying boats, especially against player ships in general, is quite a hard task. It should be one I should try out maybe at some point as well. The, the problem though is what BR do you play those kind of planes? Because they're both so low in BR that you can fight coastals, but you don't exactly want to torpedo a coastal. Because that's hard work. Well then. Didn't have much crew to begin with, I guess, in that engagement. I'll spawn the backup, although there's not much time left in this match. I'll still spawn my backup. I have gotten mine kills as well in the past with the Kuma, of all things. I think when mines first came out, I really wanted to try them out on the Kuma. And I think I've got two mine kills on that thing. And the way I did it was on Black Sea port, I sailed past the Bravo cap and just made like a semi-circle of mines, but then I had to go through the mines in order to cap that point. I managed to get two kills like that, but threw, I threw them out my coom in the process. Setting up mines effectively is really difficult, especially in a blue water vessel. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I've ever seen a airdrop mine actually working as a... Well, actually, no, I have. I've seen an airdrop mine being used against me where they just dropped the mine on a cap. And the problem, of course, with an airdrop mine, they're very difficult to spot and I don't think you can shoot them because they lie just below the surface instead of on the surface like normal ship mines. It's also a video I really need to get, just get a work on, like torpedoes and mines, how to effectively use them. 
Because I know the theory behind using all of those effectively. Just need to get off my ass and actually make a video on them. But I don't think of it, I'm, I'm busy like most of my evenings and that's when I like to just sit back and work on stuff with my evenings. I would consider I don't have the Miyoko myself and I'm waiting for it to go on sale to get it. And I'm definitely going to play it either on stream. I'm kind of reluctant on making reviews of premiums. Because one, I don't plan on getting every single premium in game. And two, it's just a bit... I don't know. Premiums are, to me, a very subjective thing. Look, it, it all just depends. Do you want to grind the tech tree? Yes or no? Do you just want to collect the vehicles? Yes or no? Although, from what I've seen, I don't have the Miyoko myself, but I've fought it a couple of times. Miyoko is very fragile. Like, it does not take many shells to take on that. It kind of has um, Belfast syndrome in that regards. Where the ship itself on paper looks perfectly fine, pretty good even, but the crew compartments are just placed so badly that it dies in a few salvos. Yeah, of course, do them in a... I do my ship reviews in a sim... my premium reviews in a similar fashion to my normal ship reviews, like what I did for battle pass or event vehicles, way back when I actually reviewed them. But yeah, Bianco's firepower is good, especially for a 5.7, and TR is good. Nope, I forgot there's a little lip on this island. But it's just a very fragile ship. Although, if you were to pester me about should you get Miyoko or Mikuma, I'm not entirely sure. Although, my personal bias would probably go towards Miyoko. Because Japanese 203s are really good guns. And Miyoko actually is anti air compared to Mikuma, it's a lower BR than Mikuma. Not exactly the same number of torpedoes, but. Nah, it has torpedoes. Look, I'm, I'm just getting Miyoko when it goes on sale purely for collection reasons. But if you had the choice, if you wanted to buy a, a premium cruiser to grind Japan with, and your choice is Mikuma or Miyoko, it's a tough choice. And then, oh yeah, Miyoko looks really good. Okay, so before we go into the next battle, we equip our sap rounds. Alrighty, chicken, that's fine. That really, really annoys me though, the, the F1M. Of course, we're talking about the Miyoko, why, why it's not look. Why not look at it? The thing is, on the catapults, right, if we go into a test sale... And this, this annoys me about several Japanese ships, right? So you have E-13s on the catapults, which makes sense for a late war Japanese cruiser. It makes sense to have E-13s on it. But then when you go to launch them... For some reason, it launches an F1M. Which makes no sense. Because for as far as I know, the F1Ms were only really used on battleships slash battlecruisers. Or as far as you can call the Congo's battlecruisers. So the, e the E-13s become, become F1Ms. Buso, which should have F1Ms, has no recon planes whatsoever. And then you have Ise, granted an early war refit, with E7s on the rear, or E8s, I don't know, I think these are E8s actually. 
Uh, Tony had that for him as well. Okay. But then, okay, so Fuso has E8. Clearly E8 and something or another on the catapults. I think the same plane as you see on one of the Mogamis. We just switch up the gunners. And you go to launch ESIS planes. And they're called Demi 13s. Why? Just why? Why? Like, I'm not really going to complain about E 13s because they're really good recon aircraft, because they're fast. They're really good to capture to get to capture points. But just why? Just give me the F1Ms. Anyways, what was I going to do? We have time for one more match, but I got the feeling I was going to do something else as well. Like, look at something. We got the sap equipped. And I think I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'll just go into the last match for tonight. And let me already think about what... Actually, somebody asked me to do Omaha's, so that's probably what I'm going to do Monday. Jules. A module should be fine. I, I barely have any of them. I equipped the sap, so that's fine. We're fine. Yeah, Fender, you asked me to do them all. I'll do. I'll probably do that on Monday. And over the weekend, I really need to work on a update summary video. And then work on more videos in general, really. I'm, I'm surprisingly busy most of my evenings. So I stream three evenings in a week. That being, of course, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Then Sunday and su Saturday and Sunday, I do that player run World War mode. And that only leaves me with, Wednesday, with Tuesday and Thursday evening. Because I like working the evenings. So yeah. Slow pro progress. The thing is, I kind of just wanted to make these videos kind of more regularly. Mainly because then I could actually hope to get into the CC program for War, Th for War Thunder. And maybe get myself something like that. Because being a CC can be really beneficial. Like it unlocks all the vehicles on the dev server. I think you get a certain amount of G per month as well as like a certain amount of test drives for vehicles. Which I don't particularly care for. But getting a certain amount of G per month would definitely be useful. Either to level crews or to just get some premium ships. I'm also very tempted to experiment with shorts, but I have no clue how to do shorts for my channel. Like, if I, I assume some of you or most of you know about Commander Terriel, and he's gotten the shorts, like YouTube shorts, and in general the YouTube game down to a T. And especially his shorts, like shorts bringing bring in a baffling amount of views. It's not even, it, it's just baffling. I don't know a better word for it. Matchmaking is good. Like I, I did one short just to experiment with it about the death blog of USS Nevada, and it did really well. <laughs> Where are you going, Sunder? By the looks of it, straight into the side of my ship. I have only played it a few times, but the Paula and Bo both Paula and Zara are pretty good. Italian, like, 
Italian cruisers past 5-3 in general are good. Napalm, I'm not gonna lie, Napalm has, a, has really bad takes from time. I wouldn't say all the time, but a lot of the times he has bad takes. And what on earth are you doing, Sumner? Could you please just get out of my way? They're, the Italian... The Italian tactic is just awkward because it starts off rough and difficult. Especially the first cruises as well are very difficult. But from literally 5-3 onward, Trento and onward, Italian cruises are fine. Pretty good even. Um, in in its own time, sure, I'll do a review on this thing. But as you know, I am not really all that fast on my video uploads. This is clear from the summer. Yep. I'm in naval gold, clearly not aware that the Bavi has anti-air missiles. Other aircraft up. A Stuka and a... Just a Stuka. Now, will the Stuka be awake enough to try and dodge the missile? Bats are on no, and the answer seems to be no as well. The thing is, you, you'd be surprised at how, about how easily you can dodge these missiles, because they, they overcorrect quite a lot. I think this too good. The, mm. Sure, you could. You, I think you, you're right. You couldn't die fast enough, but you need to move. You just need to tur keep turning and keep doing maneuvers. And I think then you'll dodge the the missile. Because again, the missile tries to intercept with the radar lock. So if if you just do spirals, basically, if you if you dodge the missile the same way you dodge ship based AA, you'll dodge the missile pretty easily. I'm pretty su sure of that. We, I'm more than willing to test it out in the future. But I'm pretty sure you could dodge it like that. Granted, I haven't, and I know that the Stuka is quite a slow bus, but I think it's doable. Also remember, arcade. Now, doing that in realistic, I don't expect that to end too well. Quite sure what the PTF 7 is trying to do around there because it doesn't have torpedoes. Leone. And that Leone is not going to charge around at rock, surely. Surely wouldn't do that in Fletcher. You surely don't, don't want to charge a destroyer. Come on, Fletcher, you're in the way. Mm, Fletcher's gonna launch his torpedoes, which are probably going to just a hit. How, how do you miss, like, most of your torpedoes at that range, Fletcher? Okay. I may, I may want to hurry up with the torpedo torpedo video, because clearly some people need it. Although I shouldn't. He still, he still got him with the torpedo. 
but that was that was that hurt that hurts the soul of a Japanese man looking at all this torpedoes miss. Oh. Summers, so I think the Summers has a frontal magazine weak spot as well. Yes, it does. Yikes. The hardest nation to grind. Um. Coastals are pretty much all very difficult to grind. Actually, nowadays. Let me think. The coastal nations I find the most difficult to grind nowadays are the ones that are predominantly filled with slow ships. Like the Russians and the Germans can be difficult in places. Although the Russians have a really good top tier. The Germans have a bit of a mediocre top tier. Although, column class figure is pretty good. Um, the hardest blue water tree is definitely between France and Italy at the moment. Although with Italy, it's difficult. Definitely not beginner friendly, but it's possible. And as soon as you get to 5-3 of Italy, you're good. If, for blue water fleets, I know how to rank them. I would currently rank them as Italy, France, Britain. After Britain comes, I'd say Germany. No, Japan. Japan goes before Britain still. So it is... Oh, would I actually put Japan after Italy? So from, from hardest to easiest, right? It is, I'd say, Italy, France... Japan. Although I'm not. I don't want to put Japan even lower because that's a really rough destroyer grind. But yeah. So then Britain. Britain is definitely easier than Japan, Italy, or France. Then Germany, I'd say, because Germany is a bit monotonous. Especially with their light cruisers. Why else is it in reverse? I do not know. Um, then there's Germany. What do I have remaining? I think I'm getting something. And then it's like a, a coin toss. I'd say. America is definitely the easiest to grind. They have the best destroyers, the best light cruisers. No questions asked. Battleships are a bit iffy on, but they're still pretty good. So it's a bit from e so from easiest to difficult, it's America, Russia, Germany, Britain. Japan and Italy, I think, are interchangeable, and then France. Because to me, there's not much reason to grind France at the moment. And that's the list just for Blue Water Fleets. So again, from easiest to most difficult. America, Russia, Germany, Britain, Japan, Italy and France. They're like, that's that's the tier list. Now this much is going to be over anyway, so there's not much reason to respawn. So that's still up. Game over. When it comes to coastal fleets, though, I really don't know. It's been too long since I played all of them to know their grind. Um. Oh, let me. I'll have to take a look at them again. Yep, not to battle, not to battle. So we have the Americans, which are mid. Slightly below it. I want to put Russia slightly above America just because they have some really good coastals in there. The 
thing is, though, Yuki, that's the exact opposite of what I'd say. I hate, like, the, the slow coastal vessels are so not the meta anymore, they're painful. Like, I'm currently literally just stuck at the Germans because of the AFD. It's really painful ships to try and do at the moment, especially because they're 2 7. Always fights destroyers, and you can't do anything against them. Russia's a bit better with some of them, but still. A Britain coastal is garbage, to be honest. It is really bad because they're not necessarily bad ships, but they're really unstable platforms really unstable so you, you really difficult to hit stuff with so britain is near the bottom japan has a sweet spot in my heart because they go from kind of especially these two are mediocre ships this line like type t1 and the sokotes are very mediocre even bad but they're all one seven and then you get to the very solid sub chasers although these two sadly being two seven instead of two three so you're, then you have like a 2-7 lineup. And then you immediately go into 3-3 with a really good PT boat, I'd say. And then frigates. Nothing but frigates. And I really like the Cold War Japanese frigates. They're really good. The Shonan and Chidori are mad, but oh well. And then you have Italy. Which I enjoyed, surprisingly. Except for Gabbiano. Because you just go from coastal only battles to... Mostly coastal battles too. Eh, a bit painful. And then SATA, which is just surface to air missile fun. France, of course, doesn't have a coastal, and that's about it, isn't it? So we only have six coastal trees. Where I would honestly put Germany at the bottom. Just because of my own experience with Germany. I know they have pretty decent top tier. Actually, should have. I think no. I think America goes at the bottom because they have a rough grind, with very fragile and very samey ships, and then they don't really end up with anything cool at the end, or anything potent. So I'd say that America is the worst coastal tree to grind, closely followed by Germany, then Russia because they have really cool, cool top tier stuff. No, sorry, Britain. Britain has to go before Germany. Or like at the same place as Germany. So it's America for the worst. Germany and Britain tied. Then Russia. Then Italy. And I honestly... I am very biased as well, remember. I'd say that Japan is one of the better coastal trees. And I would fight people over it. I think let me actually look at my service record and filter it by coastal vessels. Chikugo is, I think, overall just my most played vehicle as well. No, just just beaten out by the Type 16. Good job. I really like these ships. Isuzu as well has been a really good fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, Ch the Chikugo isn't a fun grind, definitely. But I, I've gotten to, I've come to enjoy it mainly because I also have maxed out crews for Japan. The repairing the third only takes seven seconds thereabouts. And now I remember what I was going to check if I have the chi steam achievement. I think it's in here for ram and kill. Because I think I have it, but I'm not sure. Where was it again? They added a bunch of new ones recently as well. Uh... There we go. I do, I do have that. I do not know how I got it. But I do have that achievement for getting 10 ram kills. Anyways, I think here, this, this is where I'm going to end tonight's stream. 
And let me think. So Monday I'll be doing Omaha's for as far as my sanity allows. Yes, 10 ramming kills and I've gotten them. The thing is, I think it was a whole lot easier back in the day when destroyers also had the same damage model as coastal vessels. I don't know. It's also, remember, way before the naval split, right? You'd actually have quite a few people playing coastal vessels together with destroyers. But it was possible. Uh, again, I don't actually know how I got the challenge, but I did get it. But yeah, that's it for tonight. Monday I'll be doing Omaha's for as long as my sanity allows. And that's about it. I'll try and work on a video on the update summary next week, or over the next week. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you all Monday, and thank you all for watching as usual. So yeah, see you.